Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 428, new anti-aging treatments that you encounter as you age. These treatments are called peptides. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Dr. Maupin and I went to a, a national convention of anti-aging specialists. They meet three and four times a year, and, and she tries to go and take members of her staff a couple of times a year to stay current on research trends. And peptides are, is a term that's been around for a long time. You studied in high school, you studied in college, people knew they existed. But they've now identified over 700 different peptides. And, and what is a peptide in exactly? In the human body. In the human body, yeah. So it, we can go backwards from proteins are many peptides together. And peptides are many amino acids together. So you've heard of amino acids. Right. And we have a certain number in, that we need in our diet and that we actually have in our body. And so, so, so I always heard it as amino acid chain. Right. You know, so like a bunch of amino acids. Hooked together. Less than, usually less than 50 make a peptide. And then a bunch of peptides make a protein. Okay. So that's, so that's where it comes from. But... These peptides are communicators in your body, and some of them you've heard of. You've heard of um, FSH and LH, or the two hormones that stimulate the ovaries and the testicles. You've heard of um, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. That's a peptide. And many of these communicators, we have uh, the ability to uh, test, and we also have the ability to replace or stimulate by using drugs that are now on the market. One of the most, the oldest peptide that we've used as a drug or as a replacement is insulin. Insulin is, is a small string of amino acids. Okay. And, and, and insulin normally is produced in your body. In your pancreas. In your pancreas. And, and it's for regulating regulate, absorption of sugars. Yes. And, and you need to have it to live. It, you'll, before, you'll die without it. Before insulin was, was discovered. Mm-hmm. Uh, people died. I mean, being told you had type 1 diabetes, and usually it was children that had type 1 diabetes. Now we have both adults and children. But it was a, it was a, a death sentence, and, and so they needed it to stay alive. So you can get type 1 diabetes as an adult. Yes. And if they didn't manufacture insulin, or, or if something happened, I used to read these apop- apocalyptic <laughs> novels when I was in high school and college, you know, about nuclear war. This and is the not aftermath. reality. No, it's not. <laughs> Uh, but they, they were talking about if you lose refrigeration electricity, mm-hmm. all of the diabetics will die right? because their insulin won't be good so and that's, they can't get it. That's another, that's another factor that's very important about peptides. So peptides, as w- they're working in your body, obviously they're working in a warm environment, yeah. but at, and that helps them work. But you don't want to have them working when you're storing it so that you can take it. So peptides in general have to be kept in the refrigerator. That's, that makes it difficult. Like insulin has to be in the refrigerator or Lupron, another peptide, has to be in the refrigerator. Victoza, they figured out how n- not to keep it in the refrigerator after it's been activated. It's only good for a month. So, so what is Victoza? Victoza is a, is a uh, drug for type 2 diabetes. It's a peptide and uh, it's Liguride is the is the uh, generic name, and it is used in a shot to help type two diabe- diabetics lose weight, not produce so much glycogen, so that they don't make as much fat when they eat. They also have a slower emptying of their stomach, so they feel full longer. So it really does help weight loss, and it does help type two diabetics lose. So weight. somebody that's on a uh Victoza prescription mm-hmm. or ligeride, ligeride, ligeride. Uh, could be type 2 diabetes, mm-hmm. could be pre-diabetic, mm-hmm. that your sugar numbers are starting to go up saying you're having insulin resistance. Could just be obese. And it could just be a weight issue and a weight mm-hmm. loss issue. Right. But it helps with all of those because of the way it processes. Right. It does. 
But and, it has to it, be. It, it has comes to be in a injected. package that's refrigerated. If you mm-hmm. have it delivered to your home, mm-hmm. it, the package is refrigerated, and then in the package there's a pin mm-hmm. that you have to put a needle on the end of, and then you have to twist it to activate mm-hmm. it. And once you've done that, you can have that pin out for and a month. I mean, you, one month. Yes. that's it. After that, it's no good. And then you need to get rid it goes of it because it, the activation process yeah, deteriorates. The, yeah, the the peptide deteriorates, so right. it's not going to work anymore. So, so the reason you can't take it orally is a peptide's like just like eating a protein. If you take it orally and you take that peptide as a pill, it just your body, your body thinks it's digests food. digests it the same way it does other proteins when you <laughs> right. eat. Right. Okay. So, so they're looking at ways to um, to actually. <laughs> You're going to have to. I think that's. A, that's me. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Did you turn it off? I thought I turned it off, but clearly it didn't go off. Yeah. So. So. So we are, we're looking for um, ways to give peptides orally, and they found a way to give one of the new peptides orally by coating it so that it doesn't get dissolved in the stomach or the, or the beginning of the small intestine, and therefore it can be absorbed through the lymph system. So you take it like a pill then? Mm-hmm. You take it like a pill. And it has that little, like an M&M, it has that little coating. It has a coating, but it and, doesn't dissolve. But the goodies are inside, yeah. Right. Melts Dis- in your Dissolve till it should. Yeah, right. exactly. Anyway, so so why should you care? Well, I have, in my practice, we give... As, as our, our foundation of our, of our anti-aging practice, we replace the hormones that are missing, meaning testosterone and estrogen and sometimes progesterone and also thyroid right. and any other of the um, general hormones that are communi- big communicators in our bodies. So we replace those, and we usually make people about 90% better. We also take care of their lifestyle and make sure they're eating right and not drinking too much and things like that. But yeah, it's a whole program. And exercise. Approach. It's a whole yeah. program. But but then we get to 90% of the time we're successful and people are a lot better and they're healthier and all the parameters of health that we check like cholesterol and everything else gets better. Blood pressure goes down. They lose weight. But there are 10% that don't. And these are people who need some other kind of communication to make their bodies balanced. And the kind of communication that they need is one of these peptides. So that's why we're looking into this. We're trying to figure out how to make everybody completely better and completely back to a, a younger age. So it's almost like a cartoon that you see where, where the police department gets a call and a policeman hops on a, a motorcycle or a little fast car with the headlights spinning and they run out to where the problem is and they say, here, stop this or do this. Mm-hmm. So peptides are those little rapid-acting police officers mm-hmm. who go around through your body and find the places that are out of balance mm-hmm. or not working correctly. They're the on-off switch or the regulator. Mm-hmm. The, the communicators say, do your job. Mm-hmm. And, and so... And there's no real test for that. Right. So you have to go by symptoms. So a doctor has to say, well, all these symptoms are better. And, but these symptoms aren't. There's still, there's still a sleep problem, or there's still a I'm hungry all the time problem, or there's, there's somebody still making a lot of estrogen. You've already used the drugs that you need to get rid of the estrogen, estrone. When you're giving a man testosterone, you don't want them to have a lot of estrone. So what if the drugs don't work? Well, there's a peptide for that. So, so, so we, to get a we peptide, figured out other things. I need to a do. prescription. I can't just mm-hmm. go down to my local drugstore and buy them off the shelf prepackaged. <laughs> no. So I need a prescription, need a prescription from a doctor that knows what they're prescribing it for, knows what it's knows for. Knows the dosage and, and knows how to how to give it to you. And how regularly you have to have it. I mm-hmm. mean, what is your individual body doing to cause you to need the peptide to come out and say, here, do it this way. Right. And, and we may it may take us a few tries on dosage. Like insulin resistance. To, yeah. To, to figure out what is the exact dosage that you need because we're going by symptoms. We're not going by a test. Well, by, for example, going back to the Victosa mm-hmm. concept, the, it has a little dial on it that you regulate. You start at the first activation point, mm-hmm. which is a 0.6, mm-hmm. and it goes up to a 2. Mm-hmm. So... 2.4. 2.4. Mm-hmm. So depending on what you and your doctor and your symptoms all agree on, mm-hmm. you determine 
how much to give yourself each day. And then you inject that mm -hmm. uh, with the little needle that's on the end of it mm -hmm. into your skin. It's mm -hmm. subcutaneous. It's right. not intramuscular. Right. So can you explain so, the difference between those right. two? Things? And that's, that's important because doctors often prescribe subcutaneous injections for people that they can inject at home, which subcutaneous are short-acting are short acting drugs that are uh, injected below the skin and into the um, fat that's right below your skin, but not into the muscle and not into the fascia. So, so it is very superficial. And your blood, blood picks it up and then distributes it to your body. So that's for short-acting um, medications like peptides. And it's also for people who have to, you could dose yourself once or twice a day that way. So short acting, like my dad was diabetic mm -hmm. and I remember watching him mm -hmm. use an insulin injection pen mm -hmm. and he had to take it, I think before, a half hour before, before he every ate. meal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so that was a, a quick acting peptide. Mm -hmm. You said insulin is right. a peptide mm -hmm. that would prepare his body to digest the sugar mm -hmm. and, and process it. And to be it. able to process it. Yes. Because he didn't make any of it. Yes. So, so that's that's what the sub Q works fast, mm -hmm. and and many of these peptides don't require you to have a long acting uh, effect. One little surge of it oftentimes will then trigger the downstream everything that happens downstream. It's that like knocking fixes over a row of dominoes, right? And they all just go out and fall down. So it doesn't need to have uh, a lot of a lot of. Um, Le or longevity in your body. Mm -hmm. So that's sub-Q injections, and that's the ones that, that we can train people to give at home. Right. And it's not dangerous. There's not You don't have to use a lot of scrubbing or anything before you do that. But they're not all related to if you if you don't have this or can't do this, you die. I mean, like insulin. Insulin's different. Is, is a, it is a peptide, but it's a uniquely uh, serious one. Yes, it is. And, and there are others that we've now identified. That Part of what we were learning at this workshop is there are over 700 peptides that the change that they've identified, mm -hmm. uh, m and most of them don't even have names. They, they just have, they have numbers. lab number sequences. So and, far, they don't have names. Yeah, so far, they don't mm -hmm. have names. But they've picked out uh, however many, 25, 50, mm -hmm. that they have named and are now producing. The FDA doesn't uh, approve of the peptide prescriptions yet, but they do recommend or require that you only use them as long as your symptoms last. Right. Am I understanding mm -hmm. that correctly? Mm -hmm. So it's not like other prescriptions where they, they FDA approval, but they are allowing uh, compounding pharmacies to make them mm -hmm. and, and distribute them and to the And that's how you doctors. have to get them. You can't just go to your pharmacy and get it. Right. Your doctor has to order it from a compounding pharmacy that actually makes them, and then it has to be sent. If it's already reconstituted, usually it's sent in a cold pack. Because they have to be refrigerated they have to be refrigerated. Or they start breaking down. Right. So they can they can send you like two months at a time in a cold pack, and then you keep it in the refrigerator. Most of the time you should keep it in the refrigerator as much as possible, but if you have to travel, you can put it keep it in a cool area like on the floor of the plane where it's really always cold. You know, so at, at the bottom of your purse or the bottom yeah. of your and bag. Generally, you never put your medicines in your uh, checked luggage. Always take them yeah. when you carry on. And mm -hmm. that way you can set it on the floor of the plane and mm -hmm. it, it's helpful. Let me let me go back to one thing. Yeah. I, I, the the difference or the c comparison to sub-Q injections and um, must, I am deep I am injections, that's like how we give testosterone cyprianate. That's a yes. synthetic testosterone. I don't give it, but that's how it's given. So that is something that you should have a professional give. You shouldn't give it to yourself because you have to scrub the skin. You have to have it in this particular area, and it goes deep into your muscle. So if you have bacteria on that, you can set up a, an abscess, and it's a huge problem. So sometimes that leads to emergency surgery and removal of some of your muscle, which is not the goal with people who are getting their testosterone that way. No, I was laughing because years ago, my doctor prescribed that for me. Mm -hmm. And they had my wife come in to the office and get trained on how to mm -hmm. give the shot. And they, they literally took a magic marker and, and traced over a spot on my on your... hip <laughs> that, they, that they said, stay in this parameter. And then they found a couple of like freckles or moles or something. They said, draw a diagram here. <laughs> You're always going to be safe, but if you drift off, it's a problem. Yeah, and it then, is. And then you have to do the scrubbing and all so that. So infection is not the only thing that can happen. Yeah. I mean, if you are outside of the 
upper outer quadrant of the hip, hip which does I'm always take some training. Of that, yeah. and, or um, you, the lateral thigh from the top of the thigh to the here, so it's a quarter of your thigh. That's safe, but if you go outside of that, you could be in a big nerve or a big uh, blood vessel. So, so in the companies or the doctors that give shots, usually they have you come in every couple of weeks to get the right. shot because they don't want you to run into one of these problems. Right. And the other problem is that sometimes people just go, oh, I think the whole whole vial looks good. I think I'll just give myself the whole vial. Why can't I do this at home? Well, yeah. because you're an idiot no, and we need to supervise this. I didn't say this. that. No, no, you didn't say that. Yeah. That's, that would they, be you. They said, actually, <laughs> bring your wife in and let us see how smart she is if she can figure this out. And be yeah, trained. but they tend not to do that because that just takes so much time. Well, that, that was 30 and it's years still ago. questionable. Yeah. If I have somebody who has an RN. Yeah. I mean, if they have an RN wife, then that's a possibility. Right. They can, they know how to do that. So that's I just want to make sure everybody understood that difference and why we say, oh yeah, you can give yourself shots with this and not with not with the deep. Because IM it's a Yes, yeah, because it's very very. And then you don't have the same sanitary issues. Requirements or bleeding. Well, or, you have to be clean. I mean, yeah, you have to be clean, you but you don't have to scrub. Puncture your skin, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have to sterilize mm -hmm. the area. And mm -hmm. you don't have to go worry about nerve damage or blood vessel damage because yeah. you're not going to get in far. Because that could be an emergency. Okay. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about that. So, so there is so much that we are learning about peptides, and it's an exciting new transition, additional tool in the kit bag for anti-aging doctors who specialize in anti-aging practices. And come back next week, and we're going to talk some more about the specific ones that Dr. Moffin is going to use in her practice, what they do, why she uses them, and how they work. So, so come back and learn about that. Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.